It's rewriting the past, and this hasn't happened. It's been a lot more miserable. In today's video, I am going to be using the Mad Scientist's 1992-93 database to re-simulate and rewrite Scottish football history over the years up until and including this season just gone. I don't know about you, but I certainly am excited to see if we can finally see some other teams win the league other than Celtic and Rangers. Will anyone break that dominance? Will we see some freak teams reach the top of the Scottish Premiership table? Will we see some wild Scottish Cup victories? Maybe even some League Cup victories as well. And most importantly, will my team, Aberdeen, end that wait for not only a Scottish Cup, but also the League title? And if you want to see me attempting to do that, then please go back on the end screen at the end of this video to watch my mini series with Aberdeen where I attempted to do exactly that. Rewrite history. Yeah, it's different to this video and I'm sorry for the terrible pun. But before we get into it and have our first look 10 years in the future, technically in the past, please do leave a like on this video if you enjoy this concept and also subscribe for plenty more not only experiments, but challenges as well that are going to come over summer. I'm very, very excited, and I guarantee that you don't want to miss them. In the season, technically previous to this, Rangers were champions of the Scottish Premier League, as it was back then. What are you lying for? As well as that, they were also champions of the Scottish Cup. But thankfully, not the League Cup. That was Hibernian. But since then, as you can see, until 10 years later after simulation, it was mainly the same as usual. What we all know and absolutely don't love, it was Celtic and Rangers dominance. First Celtic took the first title back after simulation, ending Rangers' hopes for five in a row. Before Rangers took it back three times, then Celtic, Rangers, Celtic, Celtic, Rangers. However... Something very, very different has happened, and it's not quite what I would have hoped. It's almost in the northeast. Dundee United are champions of the Scottish Premiership after 10 years of simulation. And I'm excited to have a little look, not only at their squad, but also just around the league, because I'm seeing some interesting names here already, most notably in the goalkeeping department. Shaka Hislop in goals, formerly of Newcastle United in real life, although we signed him from Reading. He's been here for a very, very long time. And Rene Higuita, Higuita, this guy. Redknapp. Goodness me. At Celtic, and he is unbelievable at the age of 35. He's been around just for a couple seasons. He did win the league title with them, I think. Nope, it was Rangers, sorry, Rene. But that's exciting. A little look at the top goal scorers because this fella, Robert Spehar, is top goal scorer in the league. And he looks pretty darn decent. The Croat, now age 32, he's been around at Celtic for a long time. And my goodness, he has been absolutely brilliant. It's mainly been Rangers having Croatian strikers more in recent years, but that is unreal. Simon Donnelly as well. At Falkirk bagging 20 goals. He's fantastic. Barely even... He's not played for Scotland somehow. Despite being that good. That doesn't seem fair whatsoever. But this fella, Georgi Donkov, has been Dundee United's main man. He's been brilliant for them across the years. Bought for 2.4 million from Lev Levski Sofia in Bulgaria. And he is decent. I love his haircut. And, well, I mean, the goatee is interesting. But I'm not going to comment on anyone's suspect facial hair. Dundee United did go on to win the league by just three points, pipping Rangers to the title, but that was absolutely enough with Kevin Keegan as their boss, rather interestingly, Colin Cameron, Billy McKinley, two familiar names around Scottish football, and they're in Europe. I'll be interested to see if anyone from Scotland has done anything in European trophies as well. Um, obviously, there's some history Scotland in Scotland with Aberdeen, you know, winning the most European trophies. Dundee United's squad is very, very interesting to say the least. Who's been their top performer? Georgie Donkov, of course. Colin Cameron there as well. But this guy, a young goalkeeper, also Croatian. Scotland loving the Croatians, it would seem. Has been excellent and he's only 23 years old. Looks very, very good and very capable attribute-wise too, having played in Europe for them too. But other than that, not too many 
super interesting names that, you know, would light things up a little bit in Scotland that we're aware of, of course. But clearly, these regens are bloody darn good, as well as, of course, Big Georgie. Celtic and Rangers perhaps been a little bit more free spending uh, over the years as well. Certainly Rangers were back then. They've got David Trezeguet at only 24. He doesn't actually look as good as I maybe thought he would mentally and some technicals really lacking but physically absolutely fantastic. That is a very, very interesting one. David Trezeguet, a player I thought played for Newcastle just because I saw him in a black and white striped top when I was very young. Juventus, mm, not quite the same. Steve Watson there, Newcastle United player in real life. Cassiano though, well, he is exciting. A fantastic Brazilian winger, it looks like. It's very, very interesting. I'm going to have a little look at their transfer history over the years and see if they brought in anyone particularly big named. And not seeing too many of them uh, as it comes. Dominic Matteo, he's pretty good. Uh, a big name now on Talk Sport, so uh, I'll make that what you will. Paul Scholes was on loan at Rangers. Okay, and he's very good. Now at Bayern Munich, which is pretty bizarre. Um, don't know if they like sucking toes over there or what. Robbie Fowler was here. Duncan Ferguson, as he did end up being there in real life. Sammy Hippia, the less we say about him, the better. And also, Paul Le Guin ended up there in real life too. Uh, ended up as a manager there later on. Um, well, okay, that was interesting. Let's have a little look at Celtic, shall we? Well, I've got a Spanish manager, so that's quite exciting. Jackie McNamara uh, is there, obviously played for them in real life. Shea Given as well as Rennie Higaita. Any other massive names? Maybe some of the older lot amongst you might be more familiar with some of these, but Neil Lennon, of course, there as well. Did they actually sign him or... Um, what, what's He was in USA and then they went on to sign him anyway, so... Football manager, not always unrealistic. We'll have a little look at their transfer history as well. See if they've got any big names. Uh, starting at the back, Simon Donnelly there, of course. Um, then Darren Ferguson, okay, that's quite interesting. Uh, not as many big names as I would have hoped. Lee Boyer, so I uh, hope Kieran Dyer stayed away. Paul Digoff, um, Dickoff, that is. Jersey Dudek ended up there. Uh, it was like Hibs as well. This is very, very weird. But I'm, it's very interesting as well. Stephen Presley um, obviously went on to play for Celtic in real life too. Interesting. Very, very interesting. But I'm going to go and have a look to see if anyone different has won the Scottish Cup or has it just been dominated until this year like the league was. The answer to that being no. Almost a different winner every single year. Dundee United won the first Scottish Cup after simulation before Aberdeen. Finally got one, so mm, what? So what's that? How long? Um, about five seasons they had to wait, unlike, well, real life. Before it goes back to Rangers, Celtic, Dundee United, once again, they're becoming a little bit of a force for Rangers, Celtic, Hearts, Celtic, Rangers. And Ian Jess is now at St Mirren. Well, that is painful. The League Cup, however, not quite so mixed. Rangers, before Dundee United went on to win it, four times in the last 10 years with Hearts and Rangers picking up three and Celtic picking up one as well. I was really hoping it would be Aberdeen would turn out to be the dominant force uh, if anyone else was going to emerge in Scottish football. However, alas, no. Dundee United. Who'd have thunk it? I bet you they can't even believe it. Unfortunately, no Scottish team has gone on to win the Champions League after 10 years, but still plenty time nor the UEFA Cup, although Celtic did get to a final in 2022-24. Ah, uh, hmm. Hard to work out what that was actually in real life. 96, maybe? As well as Hart, finishing runners-up in the European Cup Winners' Cup, not once, but twice, which is very, very unfortunate, but Coventry have gone on to win it. Unlucky hearts, I guess winning that competition just isn't for everybody. But neither is winning the league for anyone other than Dundee United or Rangers, it would seem. After Dundee United won their first one in the 10th year of simulation, they went, then went on to grab another couple after giving it away to Rangers for another couple years before Rangers went on a streak of dominance only to be broken by not Dundee United, not Celtic, 
and unfortunately not Aberdeen. Kilmarnock went on to win the league. Something that is almost never going to happen. I'm going to go out and say there, maybe not in my lifetime with the way things are going right now and based off the last sample of 22 years before it went back to Rangers. But that is unreal. Good for Kilmarnock and good for Dave as a party as well. Didn't win the league, but if anyone knows about him in the football manager community, basically, he's a football manager, YouTuber, kind of, Wolves fan, in the game as a regen. Pretty cool. Although, now it is mainly regens kicking about the league. Shea Gavin, still there. I'm not sure how. Now 36 years old. Oh, beautiful goalkeeper kit. Loves the green, to be fair. Not like that. But he's here after a spell in England. So, that's good. Elsewhere around the league, though, it's not looking very good for many other people uh, that we actually know. Basically all regions, after you'd imagine, as you can imagine, after 20 years. Aberdeen finishing 8th, though, that's not great whatsoever. But I'm interested to see the managers. Alex Miller, now at Aberdeen. And at Celtic, a man whose name I'm not even going to try and say, Eric Houghton. At Dundee United, Falkirk managed by Brian McClare, Hearts, Simon Stainrod, eh, not a great name, admittedly, he probably got bullied in school, <laughs> didn't we all? Jerry Taggart, manager of Hibernian, Kilmarnock, who won the league with them? They don't have a manager, so that's not great whatsoever. Motherwell, Olaf Melberg, wow, that's a blast from the past. Marvin Wilson, Partick Thistle, Rangers managed by Ian Ferguson. They love a Ferguson down there. George Burley at St. John's. I think he maybe managed there in real life at one point. And a regen at St. Mirren. But checking in on the Scottish Cup, <sighs> a little bit more dominance from the big three in Scotland, essentially. Celtic, of course, winning that one straight after the simulation. Rangers twice. Dundee United then twice before Celtic Rangers. And Aberdeen won a Scottish Cup once again. Two in the last 20 years. Absolutely take that all day long, given how long we're waiting for one right now. Rangers and then Dundee United bagging another one. <sighs> Pains me to say it, but Dundee United are massive. And they've also taken yet another League Cup. But Hearts, Rangers, then Dundee United, with Rangers getting another one for Kilmarnock winning it. They've been decent over the last couple of years. I'm excited to see the next 10 years to see how they do before Celtic and other Rangers back, Rangers back to back and back to Kilmarnock. But it's time to check on the national team. How long was our wait for a major tournament? Going back to the start of simulation, we didn't make it to the World Cup. Then we didn't make it to... Oh, no, we didn't. We didn't make it to the European Championships. Then, once again, not to the World Cup. Then... Not to the European Championships, then... Oh, no, we did make it to the European Championships for getting knocked round after two draws and a loss, so that's fantastic. And then, no World Cup. No European Championships, I'm going to guess. No, I'm European Championships with two wins before getting knocked out in the second round by Portugal. We will absolutely take that. Before, no World Cup. No European cha a European Championship again! Three European Championships in a row! Blimey, that is unbelievable. Make it to the second round again. Make it through the second round to the quarterfinal before losing to Italy, Barry Ferguson and Filippo Inzaghi on the score sheet. So that's very interesting. We still have we made it to another European Championship. Uh, did we? Did we? Yes, we did. No further than the second round this time. Okay, I'm liking the look of this. Might even make it to a World Cup looking at that group, so you never ever know, do you? But one thing I do know that's impossible, Aberdeen winning a league title, and that's despite some of the other fodder that's done it. In the final 10 years of the simulation, Rangers decided to then start winning titles again, like they never stopped, funnily enough. Four in a row before Dundee United went and got another one. Kilmarnock popped up again, like it's nobody's business, winning the league by six points this season. Rangers, Celtic, who've somehow fallen off pretty badly, it would seem. Dundee United then, back-to-back -back winners. And Kilmarnock. And that's despite Aberdeen having the top performer in the league with the most player of the matches, P. O'Connor, with a haircut like that. 
Ah, and now he's been sold to Kilmarnock, so that's good. Oh, this really is horrendous. And even more bad news is this. Well, hmm, past winners of the championship. Yep, Aberdeen, we spent two seasons down there. Never been relegated in real life. Relegated. Won the league though, so... Might win a league title eventually, maybe. Just not the top one. Um, hmm. Thank God I've not had to suffer that in recent years, despite coming close. And unfortunately, no more Scottish Cups coming our way either. So that's very sad. Rangers, however, did go and grab one. Dundee United have been absolutely brilliant uh, in recent seasons, it would seem. Um, not just recent seasons, 30 years. So it's a shame for them that they didn't get to do that in real life. However, Kilmarnock winning one. Even Morton won one. And Airdrie. So... Good for them, Ross County too. Um, it's, it's it's nice to see so many different winners. It's a shame not a lot of them playing Aberdeen Reds, but thank you, Airdrie, for doing it for us a little bit. Morton also went on to win the Scottish League Cup as well, and they are becoming quite good, even though they finished eighth in the Scottish Premiership in the most recent simulation season. Well, titles went Dundee United, Rangers, Kilmarnock, Hibs getting in there on the act, so it's about damn time we saw them do something. Killy, again, Rangers, Dundee United, Rangers, Kilmarnock, Morton, all very central belt based. So, thank goodness for Dundee United, essentially. Disgusting! And unsurprisingly, no Scottish teams throughout the whole simulation won the Champions League. But I have a feeling they might have done something in the UEFA Cup or the Cup Winners' Cup. Um, not the UEFA Cup, although Dundee United did get to the final before, unfortunately for them, losing. And obviously Celtic, as previously mentioned. What about the Cup Winners' Cup? Aberdeen maybe have a chance of getting something here. No. I mean, Hearts made the final twice. We knew that. Then no one else has done so. Newcastle won it though, which is quite nice for me. Oh my god, Kilmarnock! Kilmarnock won the Cup Winners' Cup. Unbelievable! I'm glad I wasn't one of the other two, the big Glasgow sides, Celtic or Rangers. Aberdeen still with the most European trophies, even after the last 30 years have been re-simulated once again. But Kilmarnock went on to win the Cup Winners' Cup. Did they go into the Super Cup then? I don't know. I don't think so. No, they didn't. And obviously, no Scottish teams did that either. National team did, however, make a quarter-final of the World Cup before being knocked out by Sweden with Gary Naismith bagging one, which is very, very interesting. Before, oh, making the second round of the European Champions before being knocked out by Portugal once again. A World Cup second round knocked out by Kilmarnock. That's unfortunate. And then a quarter final once again. Germany knocking us out. Oh, goodness me. I mean, if we can make this many tournaments, this is the one thing I'm concluding, that would be great. It would have been great. I'm saying it like it's a future prediction. It's rewriting the past, and this hasn't happened. It's been a lot more miserable. But regardless, interesting to see. And apparently now, somehow, Dundee United, absolutely huge, as well as Kilmarnock, and maybe even Morton. Hmm. A lot more miserable recent history for that lot in real life, however. But I don't know about you, I've certainly enjoyed rewriting history. It's been a little bit more diverse, if that's the right word to use, than Celtic and Rangers basically winning everything all the time. Would have been nice if that was actually what happened in real life and they didn't go on to win everything but regardless beggars can't be choosers i suppose if you've enjoyed this concept and also if there's anything else you'd like to maybe find out let me know in the comments down below and i will seek to inform you leave a like if you've enjoyed this video it goes a long long way in helping me subscribe with notifications on for as i had plenty more challenges and experiments as well to come over the summer and check out my Aberdeen save with this database via the end screen. Thanks very much. Take care.